And we're live with the life of the party. Nicole Hazelton is here, everybody. Yeah! <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Nicole, Short Term Rentals Nothing, you sent this to me this week. And I was like, yes. Because um, I have always thought you couldn't short term rent downtown. Um, and really, with most HOA type areas, um, it's kind of like you can't do short term rentals. Right. Which is a big hindrance and a real bummer for um, people who are looking to buy second homes or for people who want flexibility should they turn into an investment property. Because sometimes part of people's long-term strategy is, well, I want to live down here for a couple of years. I'm going to go out to Poway or something. Right. Uh, right? Yeah, people do that, don't they? <laughs> people do that. <laughs> and then, you know, we want to keep this property down here, though, mm -hmm. um, have someone else pay it off. So when you said, hey, no, I got one, smoking hot listing. It's in Little Italy, yeah? It is. Well, or, it's in the Columbia? Marina. Marina? Okay, so it's, it's on Marina. Kettner, but it's just, you know, a block and a half from Little Italy. So, okay. So yeah. South Kettner? It is. So it's on G at Kettner. G and Kettner. Okay. Yep. Really close to Pentoa Park. So you were like, hey, I got one. Short-term rentals. I was like, okay, let's <laughs> talk about that. Because I always remember, and I'm kind of old school East Village guy, mm -hmm. M2I for all those years. Um, and I remember the story of the guy in the mark. Mm -hmm. Um, so for those of you who don't know, there's, there was a dude at the Mark in downtown who basically gave the HOA the bird. And they were like, hey, you can't, you can't short-term rent this place. And he was like... <laughs> he did it anyway. And he did it anyway. So they continued to send him notices and continued to pile up fines. Um, eventually charged him 100 Gs. They set a fine example. I set an example um, and said, listen, we have rules. You're not abiding by them. And I'm assuming that he must have thought, they can't charge me money. They can't make me pay. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. HOA can foreclose on you, just so you know. Yeah. So, Those um, rules and regulations are legit. It's legit. They're a governing body. <laughs> yeah. They have some control. They, they're on title. They are on title. They're recorded documents. They are on title. This is recorded. Um, you know, they're... The, Covenant, that word means something. Mm -hmm. um, so they could have foreclosed on him if he didn't pay it. Now, would regardless, people don't think that like, um, you know, downline lien holders can foreclose. But again, your second lien holder can foreclose, your third lien holder can foreclose, your HOA can foreclose on you. Doesn't mean they'll get any money if you don't have any equity of the property. Right. They can still foreclose on you. They may just want you out of here. <laughs> so that's what I think they wanted with him. They anyway, may see the value. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They may say, you know what, let's get this joker out of here. Anyway, he paid. Yeah. 100K. So from Ouch. since then, I've been like, okay, that's just not a place where you can do this. But right. you're telling me there's a chance. There's a chance, a small chance. And so most of those HOAs downtown restrict to a six-month minimum rental period. Some of them, even the luxury high-rises like the Mark, it's even a year minimum rental requirement. So the only tenant you can put in there is long term. Yeah. Um, there are, you know, maybe 10, 15, maybe 20 buildings downtown that have a 30 day minimum rental. And we can talk more about that because okay. that's perfect for the second home buyer that's still savvy that may want to put a short term tenant in so long as it's 30 days minimum on paper. Is there a way around that, by the way? On like, paper? Here, can I, come on, let's, let's <laughs> dive in. This is Smarter San Diego. This is an informal high school production. Yeah. We're just here you know, messing around. Um, nobody's really going to see it anyway. No. Um, so if, if I have a 30 day minimum, <clears throat> do I have to, is there a rate I have to commit to? In other words, the HRA say, Hey, listen, you have to commit to a certain rate for your 30 day period. It's three grand. Um, therefore, you know, if someone stays for two weeks, you can only charge them 1500. Is there any sort of rate regulation there? Not yet. Okay. Um, that could come into play Try at some point in time. Yeah. Here. No ideas to these HOAs. Um, so the, let's think about how they can figure you out, right? They're going to look on VRBO or Airbnb, and they're going to look at the reviews that people have left. And they'll find out from those reviews or from that calendar how long somebody stayed there. Or if there's 10 reviews in one month, you clearly had more than one tenancy during that 30-day time frame. Mm. If, you're, if you have a minimum number of reviews, you're looking pretty good. Okay. And that is another way, too, that the city can figure, figure you out. So if you don't register your vacation rental property as a short-term rental property in San Diego County with the, the treasurer tax collector's office, they can fine you for previous rentals for that transient occupancy tax. And so huh. 
those short-term rental companies, Airbnb, VRBO, they can build it in now. So it's 10% on what you earn. So you're you're already you're you're kind of already skipping ahead to the, the policing of my <laughs> yeah. idea. I didn't even get to share my idea. Yet. <laughs> I want to hear the idea. <laughs> <laughs> so my idea was, hey, listen, I'm going to sign a 30-day contract for you, with you. In the contract, it says you can leave whenever you're ready. The cost is X. So if you stay a week, you know, and that's kind of what your intention is. Hey, listen, I have to give you a 30-day contract. I know you only want to stay a week. Um, so thousand bucks. Yeah. Instead of three grand, you know, but I'm changing my price because I know the person may only want to stay a week. And then once they vacate, I don't have to leave it empty. Right. Technically, right? I mean, if they leave, so I'm trying, I'm trying to think of actually how to like legally correctly do it mm -hmm. in a way that protects you, right. but also abides by the rules to the extent that someone wants to take advantage of you in that situation, they could. Right. I think you have to look at why that rule came into play in the first place. So, your neighbors, they don't want to deal with somebody coming and going, you know, back and forth um, from the property and interrupting their quiet enjoyment of the property because that's part of the rules and regulations too. And so if you have one guest during that 30 day time frame and there's not a lot of turnover, then I would think that you're abiding by that rule regardless of if that person stays for one week or three weeks or 30 full days. So as long as you're not turning over. And what's to say that people who stay for a month aren't going to party harder, you know? True. I mean, who who knows what kind of right. people we're talking about? Well, it's your short term, yeah, and your short term tenants. I mean, these are people that are coming into town for conventions. <clears throat> they're coming into town for Comic Con. Um, you know, they're traveling nurses. They're affluent, you know, members of society. They have their own properties elsewhere, you know. So it's not like they're coming in to to whoop it up and throw a bachelor party and. You know, I'm, they might be. Uh, they I might be. <laughs> see, they, they could be. <laughs> right. But you get to choose who you're renting your property to. Correct. And so you get to look at that person. On These websites are so sophisticated now. You can read the reviews about that tenant just as much as they can review, read the reviews about your property. Which is super crucial, by the way. Right. Those reviews are, are, are a big deal. Totally. Let me get to a quick question here. We are live on Facebook. If you want to share this with your friends, drop a comment. We're yes. trying to hack this whole downtown <laughs> uh, short-term rental thing. Uh, Camille, what's up? How are you? Uh, she said, I had a client in uh, Aloft in Cortez Hill get fined 5K just for advertising on Airbnb for less than 30 days rental. Dinky. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Just wow. for advertising? Just for advertising. So that HOA is Smoke on it. Show. <laughs> wow. Yeah, look out. That's the thing. They know where you're going to be advertising stuff. Right. So it's, it's, and there's probably someone smart enough who's cr who created like a scanner for these different HOAs where they can scan certain searches and s automatically email. In fact, there's probably a way to do that through Google. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, they're going to see what you're posting. Absolutely. So just know that. Okay, guys, we're not saying anyone should break any rules ever. Shame, shame. <laughs> but no, they're going to see what you're posting. So if you are going to do something and you don't want to get caught, not that I would ever recommend that, um, then you may want to just have those conversations uh, maybe over the phone and yes. not necessarily posting it on Airbnb. Right. Or you can have it on Airbnb and VRBO. You can set that minimum date or when people inquire, you can say, you know, your first communication with that person is, we have a 30-day minimum rental policy. Let's take it to the phone. You know, and that way your correspondence is within the rules. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to Craigslist and posting a short-term rental. Yeah. two fifty nine a night here in <laughs> Cortez Hill. Yeah, that ain't going to work. Yeah, don't be on your <laughs> Facebook page blowing up your short-term rental if your HOA does not allow for it. Well, let's look at one. How about 704 yes. Kettner? Uh, How about this one? Let's pull this 704 one 704 Kettner. So this is my newest listing, and this is in the Marina District. It is a townhome. So... The reason why there are no restrictions for short-term rentals is because there's only seven units in the complex and they all have street level access. So it's not like you're- So there's no restrictions on this one? No. What? No, you can short-term rent this for why one night only. Why have been talking about only. 30 days here? We've been sitting here talking about 30 days. <laughs> this has no restrictions. No restrictions, so you can do nightly on this. You can do you nightly. You can hotel this thing. Yes, you could if are you wanted you, to. Are you kidding me? This is, um, this is a much better than I thought it was 
folks, um, if you're an investor looking for an, you want to own a hotel without having to pay for a hotel. <laughs> well, um, this is perfect too for a second homeowner because you can enjoy this property as many days of the year as you'd like and then take advantage of shorter to long term rentals. And so you could very easily find somebody in San Diego looking for something for three months in the spring. I've had a lot of snowbirds coming into town, stopping by the office from Colorado or even from Canada that want to get out of the, the cool weather. And then they can leave. Did you say snowbirds? Yes, little <laughs> snowbirds. <laughs> well, look at this thing. It's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. A, B, it's, it's on the address is Kettner. Uh, yeah. So just, I mean, that's that's a big deal to some people. Yes. It really is. I think it will become more and more of a big deal to people. It's a South Kettner, so Marina District, very quiet area, uh, the quietest area of downtown. Yeah, considered one of the most prestigious neighborhoods. You're really close to the park, but this is, you know, one of my favorite architects is Jonathan Siegel oh, in this San Diego, wow. and this is a Siegel. This was his first in San Diego. Are you serious? Yeah. See that man? See, this is also going to be a historic property one day. Uh, right? That's... Well, at least that's what one of the neighbor the neighbor told me that, so he's, I haven't he's confirmed shooting for it. it yet. Siegel just sold everything. Yeah. He's going to build a high rise. He's going to build a high rise. He's going big. I know. I, I posted on his Facebook if he was looking for an agent to do the new sales yeah. to give me a call. <laughs> I um, love it. I love his product. I mean, we're it's beautiful. Look at it. Yeah, this it's one. Gorgeous. It's almost fourteen hundred square feet. It lives like a home. So, you've got really spacious interior. You've got high ceilings. This owner has lived there for eleven years. They just bought it from their landlord. Another conversation we were having. Another conversation that needs to be had. Mm -hmm. A couple of years back, they did the upgrades themselves. So they upgraded those beautiful maple floors throughout. Are really durable. They upgraded the kitchen. They added all of that quartz countertops. They did the quartz backsplash too. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I she, really like that. There's actually a gas line ran to the oven, so you could reinstall a gas oven if you wanted to, but they love induction cooking. And I will tell you, I did an open house there. I wanted to heat up some hot tea water. I put this pot on the induction stove it's and like it was seconds. boiling in like, yeah, six seconds. It's it was crazy. Nuts. So I had to post on Instagram about that. But yeah. I was really impressed. You can literally get it in one circle on the Instagram story, like, yeah. and it's boiling. It's Incredible. Nuts. And you can buy the pots at IKEA. I mean, you don't have to have these really high-end induction cookware. Um, but this has a little, you know, back patio. You can barbecue. There's no restrictions on having, you know, gas out there. So you can have a propane barbecue if you want to. Unlike most of the high rises, you have to have an electric barbecue, or you have to go to the common area. So one thing that's nice about a smaller HOA too, a little bit easier to manage all the dynamics, you know, because when you get to HOAs where there's hundreds of people, um, you can just kind of get overwhelmed by the dynamics of right. the herd, if you mm -hmm. will. So it's nice here, you're in a Jonathan Siegel, um, you know, design. And this is, I mean, you can see how well this photographs. So if you wanted to, and by the way, we mentioned this is, <clears throat> you can air, there's no restrictions, no restrictions for Airbnb on this property on Kettner Boulevard. It's a two bed, three bath. This is currently listed 749, yeah? 749, nine. And because there's, you know, no amenities within the complex, the HOAs are only 350 a month. And so, you know, you get a couple of utilities in that and your trash pickup and the exterior building maintenance, but you're not paying for an elevator maintenance or a lobby attendant and those things that you don't necessarily up. need if you're planning to rent. Especially, yeah, if you're going to, you know, Airbnb it and basically you could hotel this thing, <clears throat> spend however many nights there you wanted yourself. But I mean, this is a, a real cash opportunity here. Absolutely. A cash flow opportunity for sure. Quick question. Yes. Is it VA approved? No. No. Let's get it VA approved. <laughs> we can work on that together. Yeah. Let's let's get it. We got a, another live comment here from Jeff Goodall. What's up, Jeff? So just be careful. Most HOA communities do not allow short-term rentals, and they fine you with five ten k fines. Correct. They this do. one, there is no restriction. So just yes. so you know, Jeff, that's kind of the point of this one. There is no restriction with this HOA. Not to say that that couldn't happen, but there are seven owners in the complex. And so, you know, the majority vote right now is that they have not updated the CCNRs to 
make a requirement, a minimum rental requirement. What is this room here? This is like man cave on steroids. Look at this. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's like a theater room <laughs> right with lots now, of speakers and guitars. Yes. Their passion <laughs> is media and music. And so right now the master suite is set up for media purposes. They actually did, and we did not include this in the price, but probably seven to $10,000 worth of wiring in this room so that you can play different components at the same time and wow. have, um, oh gosh, I'm not a techie person, but no obstruction. Like you can stream on different devices and you can watch movies and huh. it's pretty awesome. Very high ceilings in this room. Super um, high ceilings, lots of high windows and they have those covered up because it is a media room, but you could really make that room very light right. and bright and into a true master suite. And both the bedrooms upstairs have ensuite bathrooms. This master suite has the little, you know, coffee or wine patio, which overlooks Kettner. And in the springtime, those trees will be in bloom. Beautiful. It's really beautiful. Yeah, it's a great spot, man. Really, really good spot. It gives you another, uh, another look there from that patio. Well, and this is right where um, G meets Kettner. And so you've got the trolley there, too. So it's close to transportation. You're going to be right down the street from the new headquarters that just finished a couple years back. Seaport Village renovation that should be starting in the next three years will be the underwater aquarium. That's across the street. It's across the street. Literally. I mean, this, the growth potential for this neighborhood to be in something low density. Let's put it this way. Comic-Con, you're rented out. You're done. You have it the whole time. You're maxed out. <laughs> Um, anything that's going to happen in the new Seaport Village area, anything that's a convention center draw, yes. you're going to Airbnb and you're going to be stacked um, because you're going to be in a, it's a house, you've got the two beds, you've got the three baths, um, and you've got a, a situation where people will be a little more private, a little bit more stretched out, mm -hmm. if you will, um, than you would in a situation with a hotel. Um, so you could charge more than the hotel's wills, so you'd be in really good shape there. Well, yeah, you're talking about over a thousand a night during Comic-Con. Yeah. And you're right across the street from the convention center. Across the street. You're walking distance to Seaport Village. I mean, it's just such an easy sell. If I'm looking at this from a short-term rental opportunity, yes, um, it's just such an easy sell. There's so many selling points on this, and there's so few units like this. Right. You know, and well, especially without the restriction. Right. And if you're just buying, if you're looking for that second home, but you're savvy, and you don't want a property to just sit there empty, or you don't want to just be paying for something that you're only using some of the time, that's what you that's want. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's what you want. So here that gives you an idea. Right across the street there. Boom. Yeah, it's an incredible property. And you do have parking down below. So there's a, a garage that is really easily accessible. It's shared between all of the owners. This unit is deeded two spaces, but one is very compact. So I call it one and a half space. It has a storage unit. Are they tandem or side by side? They're at a funky angle, which means that you'd have to park them like a tandem spot, but they're okay. not technically tandem. Not technically tandem. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can show them on a showing. Okay, no worries. Yeah, no, having underground parking by all, all by itself is great. Totally. It's a huge selling point. And if we're, if we're talking about what we're ultimately going to use or, or what we're kind of selling here is the opportunity. And I'll get out of the photos so we can look at some of the deets here. Um, so it looks like you have an open house this weekend. Yeah, yeah, actually, my friend Fabio is holding an open house on Saturday. Um, I think he's going to be there from 11 to 2. Or 10 to 1? It looks like, yeah, 11 to 2. 11 to 2, perfect. So 749.9 for this one. Um, two bed, three baths, 1334 square feet. Built in 91. Um, HOA is 350. And really big bedrooms, which is pretty cool. Jonathan Siegel design. And no restrictions on the HOA for Airbnb and short-term rentals. That's the really big kicker right. here. Everybody's really looking for income right now. Mm -hmm. The reason I asked about VA is not VA approved. The reason I asked is we have a lot of veteran buyers. You know, we have the... Um, the loan limits have been unrestricted now yes. for people who have full entitlement. And so if you have full entitlement, you can go up to $2 million. So say there's no limit, but really up to $2 million based on income qualifications. Incredible. So I got a lot of people who are looking kind of in this price range, the sub 800, yes. trying to find income. This is about as good as you get. Now keep in mind, if you're a VA buyer, it doesn't mean you can't go get a conventional loan and buy something like this. I want to make sure that you're aware that you, right. it's going to require down payment, but um, it doesn't mean that it's off limits completely for you. Right. So we don't want to exclude anyone here. Um, I will drop my NMLS 155010 <laughs> as well as I start talking about loans. Um, but this is just one of those opportunities. Had to bring it up because when you when you sent it to me and then finding out there was no restrictions. Not even 30 days. Bonkers. Yeah, you don't even have to try to work around. <laughs> this is going to, this has to fly. This has to. The only reason this isn't sold right now 
is because people don't know about that. Right. <laughs> as soon as they do, as soon as word gets out about that, this thing is gone. I should put it, at, right now it's in the confidential remarks on the MLS. I should just put it in bold print Change on the, the address to, <laughs> yeah, move, just remove the address <laughs> and just say no HOA restrictions no on Airbnb. HOA. That's it. Uh, that's all people need to know. Well, this is an awesome, uh, this Thanks. is a great listing, an amazing opportunity. Again, our downtown expert, um, Nicole Hazelton, comes through with some incredible information on a property that um, a lot of people are going to want this thing. And what's interesting about it is, though, you just mentioned, how do you look for that? Like, there's no search criteria to say, hey, I want something that has no HOA restrictions for Airbnb. There's no right. checkbox on Redfin for that. No. There's not even a search criteria in the MLS for agents to be able to search that. I mean, we have to individually contact each HOA to find out. I just did some research for a buyer of mine who's looking for something with a minimum 30 day because it's a second home and they want to be able to rent it on the off months that they're not here. And it, it's, it's a lot of work. So you have to partner with a realtor that knows what they're doing in the area and that can find that information out for you. Yeah. So it's, right now, I mean, I've got some tricks up my sleeve. I've got some properties that, uh, <laughs> I mean, you can get into some really great communities, even on the 30 day minimum under 400,000 really? in downtown. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there's, there's more opportunities, not that no restrictions like this one. Right. That's very, very rare. Very rare. I mean, you have to wait for something like this to actually list to be able to research it. Otherwise, you're calling every single little one-off building in downtown hoping something will list or sending letters to the owners asking them if they're looking to sell. Um, so, yeah, rare opportunity. Rare opportunity, tremendous stuff. Nicole, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, it's great thanks. to see you. I really see you appreciate too. your time. Thank you. Hey, share this video with your friends, make this part of everyone else. No HOA restrictions in a downtown property that can be rented. Airbnb 704 Kettner. It is going to be open uh, this weekend. It's on Saturday from 11 to 2. Hope to see you guys there.